Did you know that the instrument of Antonio Stradivari worth millions, millions, probably more than 15 million, has been for several days under the water in a river somewhere in Latin America? Stay tuned and I'll tell you the story. Hello, hello, back again. This is Edgar from Cremona, Italy, and I'm probably making the best sounding instruments in Cremona. And so today I tell you a story about a very interesting instrument of Antonio Stradivari. Now you have to think of every instrument actually has its story. And today I would like to tell you the story about the Mara Cello. It's an interesting story because there was this Johann Baptist Mara. Now some people say he was the first owner of that instrument. That instrument has been made by Antonio Stradivari in his golden period in 1711. A typical cello on the B mold, which is a rather long, narrow instrument. Its sound has several descriptions, even from that year when Mara was playing on that cello. He wasn't actually such a great cellist, but his wife was a very famous lyric singer. Gertrude Elisabeth Meaning, I'm good in German, was so famous that Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, important man for German literature, even wrote some poems for her, so she must have been really beautiful and singing really good. So Mara was a happy man and they had a very sparkling relation. He was drinking a lot and they did a lot of strange things, so people were talking about them in newspapers and we have all these documents the wife actually passed away very very poor and even him he had to sell that cello because when they divorced then probably he was drinking even more he was drinking that much that even nowadays if you look at the instrument you can see on the back side an area where it's no varnish actually which goes rather to the sea bout area and that's because some of his super alcoholic drinks very likely took off a little bit of the varnish but the story then goes on he sold the cello for 100 English pound and then you have a list of people and then it goes 100 150 200 250 we're talking about 1808 1810 it was all the time mainly owned by people in England and then it switched over to Argentina from Argentina then there were some changes in the property then it was in heritage, then sold it. And to sell it at that time, he went back to Hill in England, in London. Hill sold it then to that owner, Baldovino, who was actually a cellist from the Trieste Trio. He was from Rome and he played that instrument and they were doing very well and quite famous in these years. And there is a lot of articles written about them. They toured in Latin America in Uruguay. And when they have finished there, they wanted to take the airplane from Uruguay to Buenos Aires, but the airplane couldn't leave because there was too much fog. There was so much fog and then beginning they said yeah in a few hours, in a few hours, in a few hours. At a certain point they understood it will last for a few days. They were stuck there. So they were thinking how can we go in time? We have a concert at the time, no phone, no internet. Damn, how can we do that? And they decided to take a steamboat on the river all the way up to Buenos Aires. Isn't that interesting? Since it is so interesting and it still continues. So subscribe. So the next video you will be informed that there is another video of Edgar. Come on, push that button now. Come on, what are you waiting? Subscribe, thank you. Okay, that trip was lasting quite a long time and in the night, about 4, 4.30 in the morning, they were knocked out of the deep sleep. Wake up, lifeguard, uh, emergency. And then they saw that everything is here going on, that the, the boat has a problem. They went up and all was quite easy. So he went back to his cabin, took the cello, because already at that time was a pretty good, expensive instrument, and left all the rest. But the cello is the most important thing for musicians, of course. I went up. In that moment, the boat took fire and all the people on the boat in that very moment understood this is now 
just a question of life or not life. And himself, Baldovino, didn't even remember if he now took the cello, if he left it there, if he dropped it in the sea. It was just that when people were going overboard into these small boats, which then too many people were inside, they fell over and they all went into the water, whatever. It was a question between life or death. And they survived. And in the first day, until the next day, Baldovino told in one of his interviews, he didn't even think about the cello anymore. But then he realized, damn, my Stradivari cello is in the water somewhere. I lost my cello. So then it became public that he lost his cello. They started to search and somebody a few days later, within three or four days, they found his cello. He realized to get his cello, when he opened the cello case, it didn't look like a cello anymore. They were just all the pieces. If you see all these pieces in a cello case, you wouldn't believe this was a cello. This impact that the entire instrument went under the water for several days, an instrument from the golden period 1711, goes under the water. Could be that even the varnish cakes off a little bit, gets a little bit disturbed from all this mess which is in this river plata. Who knows what was swimming over there. But Baldovino took it and brought it back to Europe. He brought it to London, to Hill, and Hill restored that cello in over 700 hours of work. Within a year, I'm still impressed how they could do it this quick. I just imagine how much work that is. And they built up the whole instrument and he played until two years before he passed away on this cello. The Hill brothers really did a great job, believe me all the respect. Baldovino passed away in 1998 and he played until 1996 on this cello. The Mara then has been sold in 1998 to a German CEO from a big company. This business owner, this entrepreneur, borrowed it to Heinrich Schiff as a very famous Austrian cellist. I even met him. He was probably the luckiest cellist existing in the world because he had the Mara cello, which has a very focused in straight sound and on the other side he had the Domenica Mentaniana Sleeping Beauty which is good stuff. So when Heinrich Schiff passed away then he passed it over actually to his student Christian Portera who is still playing it or I don't know if he's still playing but I believe so and it's actually a still a uh, very good sounding instrument and if you happen to see it you will see there's a French bridge on it because these strats are very focused sounding. I haven't read any other story about any other different instrument where even the sound has been described 1780 uh, something when Mara was playing by somebody and later on also. Do you think that this instrument sounds great? Would you like to see your instrument underneath the water? Hmm? Let me know huh? down below. And if you leave a message, it's not under the water. Believe me, it's just, uh, I can read it. I hope you like this video. If you want some more videos like this, let me know. Subscribe if you didn't subscribe yet. And see you next time. Ciao, ciao.